uh, live. Great, good uh, good afternoon everybody. Um, it's 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and this is uh, another episode of Hacker Hotshots. I've got Josh Thomas, um, fresh off a plane from uh, Amsterdam where he was at Black Hat and the presentation that we're going to offer today, or Josh is going to offer, is off-grid communications with Android. Um, Josh will give us a quick background about himself, but uh, he's in a, an applied research scientist with Acuvent Labs. So thanks, Josh. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Okay, so um, if you want to share something about yourself, then terrific. Otherwise, we'll just jump straight into the presentation. I will share things while I'm on the slides. So. Okay, let's do it. So my name is Josh Thomas. I am with Acuvant Labs. Um, as Max said, I'm an applied research scientist. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is meshing stuff up with Android. Basically, how you can enable ad hoc networks and what you can do. So I've been developing software for about 12 to 14 years. Uh, at some point, I got to uh, horribly tired of actually writing software and decided that I wanted to do security work instead. Um, as I always found myself, instead of actually wanting to build something new, I really just like to tear things down and break them. Um, I love to repurpose things, so most of the projects that you'll see me do are repurposing existing technology to be used uh, in different ways. Um, the best way to find me is really Twitter, at monk. Um, but all of my other contact information is valid. So the project in general, uh, and this is typically like an hour, two hour long presentation, I'm trying to cram in 15 minutes, so bear with me a little bit. Um, SPAN was originally an open source, or it is an open source project. It was originally funded by the MITRE Corporation uh, to be used solely for emergency preparedness and response situation. Um, I still run the open source effort even though I've left the MITRE Corporation. Jeff Robel, who co-presented with me at Black Hat, still works at MITRE and is the lead uh, developer that gets paid to work on the stuff. So it's kind of a, the, the whole project in general is twofold. There's uh, a larger and larger community outside that is doing this as open source work, and then there are still the uh, MITRE employees that are working on this at the same time. And we're all really trying to hold hands as much as possible. So and all these slides will be online, so I'm going to blow through these very, very quickly. But the code base is GPL3. Um, everything is open, and we're built on a whole bunch of other projects. Uh, this slide deck will be on GitHub if you want to see all the attribution that we do in the other projects in this space. So mesh networking in general, what is it? Um, it is, in a very basic sense, like academic graph theory. Um, I have an applied math background, so I like to look at things as, as mathematical constructs. It is exactly like graph theory, except for instead of nodes on a piece of paper, we have nodes that are moving around very fast, moving in and out of connectivity. Um, so the vertices are unstable. They're based on arbitrary signal strength. Um, in this fan project in general, I am hijacking the Wi-Fi chips embedded in Android phones to create the network. And because of that, I'm limited to about five to 700 feet in between each phone. That tends to be the range of uh, Wi-Fi receptiveness. So I need to have one phone every five to 700 feet, or I get arbitrary signal strength. I get nodes dropping off my network. Um, I guess the picks are horribly ugly. So why did we do this? Um, this is something I, I actually care about a lot, and it was the impetus to kind of do a whole bunch of nights and weekends and, and labor of love on this project. We saw Hurricane Katrina in 2005, um, and over 3 million phone lines go down. Uh, no surprise there. Knocked out 2,000 cell towers. Uh, a little bit of a bigger surprise, but not really. There was massive destruction everywhere. What was surprising is the land mobile radios also died. Um, basically, you had a situation where there was a city with absolutely no infrastructure and a whole bunch of people needing infrastructure. People needed 911. 
the best way to actually get 911 during Katrina was to find someone that magically still had power and was a ham radio operator, or to find a reporter that was going down there and reporting on the event. And they had good high-tech communication equipment that they could reach back. So you actually had CNN reporters acting as 911 operators when they weren't live on TV. Um, it was insane, and I would hope that we would have learned our lesson. So we moved almost five years in the, the future. Now we're in not a first world country, but still. Um, Haiti, huge natural disaster. Um, again, the physical phone lines went down. That's not a surprise. The Haitian cellular infrastructure actually stayed up. Um, it was brittle and degraded, but it actually stayed up until all the volunteer workers from around the world went down to help Haiti. The influx of devices that we saw come into that country, uh, the massive amounts of people that were trying to get along, trying to make phone calls, actually killed what fragile infrastructure for cellular communications they had left. Um, so we somewhat learned from that problem um, when we had the Fukushima disaster in Japan a year later, we, we had the, the same issues that we've already talked about, but we also had the cellular infrastructure providers, the, the, the people you pay for your cell service, basically killed mobile phone traffic um, for everything but emergency personnel. So. 90-95% of the calls of I pick up my phone and want to tell my family I'm okay. 90 to 95% of those calls did not go through. They were just blocked. Um, this was in direct response to Haiti and some of the other things that we've, lessons we've learned around the world of just if everyone's going to get on their phone, that infrastructure is going to die. So let's limit to begin with. Um, it was an acceptable solution, but not one I'm in love with. Because um, you still want to be able to tell your family you're okay. You still want to be able to figure out where to meet up with people. Um, so it, it, it did let, allow the emergency personnel the ability to move around and do things, but it killed the ability for the actual populace to communicate. Um, since then, we've seen Arab Spring where instead of a national disaster, you have a government that shuts communications down to keep people from being able to communicate, to be able to organize. Um, again, I don't love this. Uh, I don't like the ability of anything natural or otherwise to my ability to communicate with people. Um, so that is the impetus of the whole project in general. How we've solved it, we've solved it by hijacking Android. Um, so, we just said, we don't need infrastructure. Um, let's create a peer-to-peer -peer mesh so the, the phones in general. Um, I can hand with the Wi-Fi chip. That is horrible back then. Um, I can fight by the fight by the right side chip. I can then the physical chip and say the things that can't match between these two phones. I can add a third phone, I can add a fourth phone. I can add ten thousand phones. I can I've built a fully scalable open source mesh network platform that people can use. Um, I can do VPN tunnels over the mesh. I can bridge the mesh to a cellular infrastructure so if that still exists and someone has a data pipe out on AT&T or where the start off and have an interaction with security through Wi-Fi, I can bridge those two connections and actually provide the internet back to the rest of the mesh. It's a good, scalable, dynamic, resilient mesh network, totally built off Android. They have absolutely no infrastructure to fail. So here it is. I've got three phones connected together. Um, um, how we did it and why we did it is the last thing I'm really going to talk about today. Um, 
I've seen a lot of academics want to explore mesh networking and how to do it, and they tend to burn a year of PhD time trying to get the things working just so they can solve the hard problems. Um, this band project was originally intended to be a framework that academic researchers could build upon. It's kind of grown into an actual useful application, but it, its roots were let's build a framework that academics can use to solve the difficult routing problems. Um, we kind of got tired of waiting and we started solving them ourselves. But there's still a lot of work to be done in that realm. Um, the framework that we chose is, is kind of in direct opposition to uh, the other main player in this space, which is Serval. Um, Serval provides voice over IP. They, they provide some basic functionality for meshing. And they do it all in user land, which is really interesting. You can download the app from the App Store and open it. Your phone goes into mesh mode, and it can to everything that is compiled into that application. We went the other way. We hijacked the kernel. The, the downside of that is we have to customize to some extent to every device we work with. The benefit to that is all of the applications you're used to using on your phone just work. I'm below the network stack, so I don't, you know, Twitter still works. Twitter does not need to realize it's on a mesh network. It doesn't care. It's just talking to the typical Android networking stack. Um, you know, at the white level, at the, the top of this chart. Um, I'm way down at the bottom with, in the blue and the green. I've got this transparent proxy that lets me basically manipulate any packets that are going in and out of that phone and hide how they're actually working from the applications. So Facebook still works. Twitter still works. Um, you know, Google Plus still works. Any of your... Uh, voice over IP software. Anything that you're used to using on your phone works in the exact same app as it always has. There's no context shift. There's no, oh, I need to get this data from here and push it over here. No, your phone is exactly what you're used to. It's just now you're not connected to cellular infrastructure. Now you're not connected to Wi-Fi. Now you're on a mesh network. Um, and we when we sat down to, to start this project, we actually thought that was much more usable, usable because people are already accustomed to how their, their phones work. They don't want to shift. In an emergency, the last thing you want to do is learn a new piece of software. If you're in an Arab Spring situation, the last thing you want to do is fight with some new piece of software. You just want things to work the way you're used to. That's what we provide. Um, so, in general, the two things that I have to do, the reason I have to muck with the kernel to do what I want to do, is I need to make sure that I can actually control the Wi-Fi chip to do what I want it to do, which is basically go into ad hoc mode. And I need to make sure that there's wireless extensions that work built into the kernel. It's a mishmash of where we find these things, if they exist or if they don't exist. Uh, but we've had relative ease in enabling everything. In fact, for the Samsung Galaxy S3, here is the diffs from the actual kernel that we had to do. Basically, we had to turn off drop UDP packets when the screen is off um, because I'm using UDP packets to keep my mesh alive. Uh, the Android kernel in general likes to drop those just for power saving um, capabilities. When the screen's off, don't reply to UDP packets. Just drop them on the floor. Um, I still need my stack to actually utilize those to, to keep the mesh alive. So there's there's one line change there. And the other one line change is solely enabling the actual Broadcom driver that is universal across a ton of phones to say, yes, I, I support ad hoc mode. Um, Above and beyond that, we've, we've built some apps and whatnot just to kind of visualize what this stuff is doing. But it makes sense. This hides as a kernel module. And you'll never see it. It just when you need it, it works. Um, we did all this. So, and this will be the last slide I cover because I'm running a little over. Um, we did all this in general because routing is hard. We wanted to enable a platform 
that would let people do research for routing. Um, we, we have since started writing our own routing protocols and also opening up the community for academics to do peer routing research. Um, and I think with that, I put in, so if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter or give me an email. Um, let me go back up to my contact info. Yes, there you go. Um, and if you go to um, omg-ponies.com, that'll link directly to the GitHub account that has everything that you would ever want to know about SPAN, including the source, all the presentations we've done, and whatnot. Um, I think with that, are we good, Max? Yeah, perfect. OK, so if you can just bring yourself back up on to just press screen share and come back on. Perfect. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate you sharing that in uh, that, that terrific presentation. Got a, a couple of questions that came through. Um, what impact will the 802.11 AC standard have with Android? Apparently, it'll be more secure. Is that true? Um, it may very, very well be more secure. Uh, a lot of these new um, Able Star things that we're seeing coming in the pipeline are still a couple years out. Um, they can be utilized. Uh, we are actively looking at 802.11s, actually. Um, because it, it, when it actually goes into full swing, which will probably be 2015, uh, it could be utilized. We just don't want to wait that long. OK. Uh, do you support the Tor network? We do not yet. Um, in as much, I mean, you know, again, I'm, I'm very low on the networking stack. So if you have a Tor app on your phone, chances are it will still work. I haven't tried it. Um, I have actually been working on some different routing protocols that will enable a Tor-like functionality for routing around a mesh so you can ensure that you are not being sniffed or snooped on by anyone else on the mesh. Mm -hmm. um, that project is currently under review by DARPA. Uh, and it, if funded, it will be open source. If it doesn't get funded, the work will still get done and it will still be open source. Terrific. All right, and then uh, final question here. What are your views on jailbreaking? Does that allow for more security? Um, I mean, in, a, in an iOS construct, the, the, the fight that we've... Android is always easier to develop on, right? So, because it's so open. Um, we've been able to get iOS devices fairly easily on our mesh. Um, but unless we jailbreak, we cannot instigate the mesh from an iOS device. There has to be an Android device that starts it, and then iOS can join. Um, in, in, I mean, in, in a general just security sense, when you're, when you're looking at jailbreaking, you are looking at the I was giving you. Uh, that's bad and not great and kind of dumb, unless you then go through and actually secure the device. Um, which is not horribly difficult. And I mean, personally, I jailbreak because I, I don't like not knowing what's going on in my phone. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, iOS is fairly secure and stable, but you have, as a user, you just have to blindly trust that. You actually don't get to see what's going on in the phone. It's I'm not good with that, so I, I jailbreak so I can actually watch what's going on in my phone. All right. Uh, perfect. So I just, if, if anyone's hearing some chaos in the background, I just want to quickly apologize for that. There's a there's a, some construction going outside. And so thank you very much for your patience. And Josh Moore, thank you very much to you, sir. Uh, you know, a terrific presentation, continued success. I wish you continued success and hopefully get you back on again and I like your presentation style by the way standing up I think it's very very effective very very cool it's the first time we've had it and uh, I like I think it's uh, it's a really good way of, uh, of, of performing these hangouts terrific well great thank you it was thank easy because I have no furniture in my house because I'm moving tomorrow so okay <laughs> <laughs> sounds good there's always a silver lining right all right my friend thank you so much good luck okay thanks thank Josh bye-bye